Hello, John Blackwell here again with another tutorial on MaximDL, this time on MaximDL version 6 and how it handles photometry. And it's uh, quite a change here. Version 6 allows us not only to do photometry on single images and multiple images, very much like version 5 did, but it also allows us to do photometry on images that are taken through multiple filters. That is, if you are taking a full series of UBVRI or BVR or whatever filter combinations you choose to use, um, MaximDL now handles this in a much nicer manner than it did before. And this is actually a real boon to those of us doing some more hardcore science using MaximDL. You now have the ability to do B and V photometry on a star field and then utilize that uh, all at once through the magic of its star identification system to um, do things like create a HR diagram or a color magnitude diagram, which is actually one of the, the better features now with uh, with version 6. So without further ado, let's look, open some images that we would like to do some photometry on. And I just happen to have a series of BVRI images here of U Geminorum, which is a classic cataclysmic variable star. I'm just going to open all of them. And once again, just like stacking and using a very similar methodology here, you don't have to open all the images in MaximDL to do this. It'll actually perform it off the drive, which is also fine. But here I'm just going to uh, use all the memory I can in my machine. This video is going to be interesting, by the way. Um, I'm actually recording this using some software on my Macintosh, and you can see it's running a Windows emulator in VMware Fusion. So I'm going to go back and forth between Macintosh View and uh, and the view that you would get in uh, Windows. So just stand by a little bit here. The first thing we need to do, of course, is to make sure that all these things have been calibrated. Some of them have, some of them have not, so the software is going to go through and find the three that were and ignore the rest because they don't need calibration. So here's a classic image of U Jim and Orm. We can see uh, our star field. Very nice, pretty image here. So here's what's new. You open up the Analyze and Photometry menu, and it pops open this neat-looking photometry dialog box, which has a bunch of tabs and a big open space on the left. The Select tab, the easiest one, making sure that you have Object Checked and Filter Checked. That way you can look at the fit setter and determine what filters you're using and whether or not this object has been named appropriately as a target in your fit setter, which, in this case, it has. You can say Add Files, Actually, I don't want to add files. I want to add images because they're already open. Say add all and say OK. And look what it's done. Under the target of U Geminorum, it has separated all these out by their filter. So you have three B, three in I, three in R, and three in V. Pretty slick. Already this is looking pretty cool. Let's ignore the quality tab for now. The quality actually allows you to select files. Suppose you're doing a long time series, hundreds of files. It allows you to pull out any that are unusual, for example, things where stars got out of round or where the full width half maximum just went huge on you because of weird seeing conditions, or maybe your tracking was not so optimal. Um, things like intensity and contrast are also perfectly there for you to utilize. Matching. I like to always use automatic star matching when I'm doing star fields. This allows MaximDL to determine the shift between a variety of images so that it can identify the stars in each field. The most important one here is the Identify tab. This is the one that allows you to select which stars you're going to use as uh, objects that you're trying to measure photometrically, but also the stars that you're using for comparison and as reference stars. Now, this is where I'm going to switch back over to uh, a web page. We're going to go over to the aavso.org website, and they have a really handy thing here where you can enter UGEM and ORM and tell it to create a finder chart. And it will go off and do that using its variable star database. And then I'm going to actually tell it to make this a slightly larger scale that matches more of the scale of my particular images. And off it goes and it does that for us, which is really quite nice. And we can open up a photometry table for this chart in a new tab, and we'll look at that in just a minute. But right now, we've got this image that we need to look at of uh, Eugeminorm's finder chart. 
It actually looks to be about right. This is not correct. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. It needs to expand out a little bit more. I'm not exactly sure what it did there. You go back one. Make sure it's a new Geminorum chart. Start to plot it. And sure enough, that's much better. Okay, so there's the scale. You start getting used to the, the images of stars pretty well. You open up a new photometry tab for this particular chart. You can see that it is labeled all the comparison stars by their UBVRI uh, photometry measures, B minus V, etc., JHK, um, and here are the labels. So if you find star that's labeled 114 in the image, you know that its V value is really 11.414 with plus or minus 0 0.006 of a magnitude. And this little superscript there refers to the area down here telling you what the source for those reference stars measurements are. And in this case, is from Arnie Hendon's USNO 1 meter catalog. Okay, so that's pretty handy. So let's go find new Geminorum. This is a pretty easy star to find, actually. And if we turn on, uh, we turn on our crosshairs, it becomes really quite obvious that we have found a new Geminorum ju just down here, right there. So it's a nice, easy star to find. Let's turn off these crosshairs so as not to confuse things. We know that new Geminorum is right down there. So at this point, we're going to select an image. This is the weird thing. You have to select an image. I like to use the V images. They work um, particularly just a bit better for identification. Scroll into the field where UGeminorm is located. And then we're going to tell the software here with the drop-down that we're selecting a new object. So UGeminorm is right here, and we're going to click on it. It's going to say Object 1, and I'm going to type UGEM. And if you look up here, you'll see that it has indeed uh, entered Eugeminorum as the target star by name, which is very nice. Going back here, we want to get uh, a comparison star. This one's 11.4. We'll take the 11.4 star, and we'll note that its V image brightness is 11.414. And we're going to tell this to look at a reference star in V. I'm going to click on it. It's going to want to know its reference name. So we go back here. And we copy the AUID for the star. Go back and enter that. Just paste it in. Kind of handy. And it immediately asks you, hey, what are the B, I, R, and V magnitudes for the star? We know in V it's 11.414. Now we should look up the R value. Go back here, see if we've got an R value for it. Oh, we don't. That's a bummer. But you got a B value of 11.904. That's cool. Do we have an I value for this star? Oh, we do. 10.803. and no R. So we're going to uncheck the R's because we don't have a, a suitable component there. We're just going to ignore the R measurements for now. Okay, so now I got B, I, and V. And now we need a comparison star. Let's go back over here and find another star that should be a pretty solid value. The one immediately to the left, magnitude 12.0. Looks pretty good. Let's use 12.0. 12.0 We'll copy its ID, go back here, find the 12.0 star right here, and then we're going to tell it that we're using this as a check star. Click on it and paste its ID. And there we have everything selected properly. At this point, you should probably take a look at the, uh, the values of full width half maximum. Check it out, full width half maximum here is 4.08. Make sure that our aperture is at least twice that, just for, for goodness's sake. There we go. We may want 
look at that one. That one's a little bit excessive. Maybe make it just a bit larger. Okay. Selecting aperture diameter is a real skill set and something that I should probably have another video for. At this point, it's done the calculations for everything. We just go to the graph window. And I'll drag this into view once it's completed calculating. It's, it's sitting here spinning its wheels, which is a little bit off your screen, unfortunately. But there's a little uh, dialog that says analyzing, and it's uh, got a little blue progress bar. And the progress bar is about halfway done now. It's analyzing the, uh, the images in R. And then uh, now it's migrating over to uh, V. And then it's just going to wipe it out and complete it for us and give us this dialog. So here's the completed dialog with the photometry table. And it gives you a chart of magnitude on the y-axis versus the hours since the start of observing, which is uh, in Julian date here. Pretty handy. And uh, everything is, is pretty obviously selected. A neat thing here is that if you decide to click on, on these, you are going to see the images behind the screen change. And suppose you have a value that shows up as being really off or really abnormal. You can uh, you can uncheck it, and I'm, I would like to show you that for the R values here, that big red X through the ones that are not selected, which is really handy. Uh, but you can choose to uh, unselect images if you find that, say, a satellite or a meteor or a firefly or something went through your image. Well, that's great. Now, how do you export the, uh, the data? It uh, can be exported in multiple ways. You can export it as a comma-separated value file, and there are some options there for you. And you can also save it as the default AAVSO format, which I'm going to show you here. I'll just open up that dialog and let it rip. We'll put this right on the desktop. We'll call it UGEM. And then it's going to look for the observer code. In this case, my observer code is BKL. And then it's going to ask you for a chart ID. And that's when we go back over here and we grab the sequence here in the chart field of your observation report. You need to copy that bring that back over here and paste it in. And then when you're done, just say save. And when you save it, it will actually open up this text file that you can then send off to the AAVSO reporting system. And uh, look at that, that's pretty cool. It's got the B, I, and the V values measured, and the magnitudes are very clearly somewhere around 14.3, 12.8, um, 13.9. There it is, everything there is correct. So. Uh, that's how it does photometry, and that's how it does it with multiple filters. It's pretty cool. Very quick, um, much easier than it used to be where you had to open up groups of, of single filters like V first, and then uh, U, and then R, and then I, and it would take you a long time, and you'd have to re-find all of those comparison stars. The only thing I would recommend is to make sure that the, the photometry list that the AVSO gives you here, the field photometry, includes uh, comparison stars in the uh, filter colors that you've used. For example, red didn't show up here for my 11.4 star, um, and neither did you, um, the U filter in ultraviolet. So you just want to make sure those are available to you before you start measuring, if it matters. If not, you can uncheck like I did and, and just move forward. So with that, uh, thank you for watching, and I, I wish you clear skies.